Hi everyone, uh, before this awesome haunt that you're about to see starts, I got some exciting news that I want to share with my, all my viewers and uh, is actually directed to the non-resident and if you're, if you're a resident and you got family and friends that that's no, not considered resident anymore, uh, they can get it on as well so you can help me share this as much as you can. Let your family know that's the way. As you can see, I got uh, eight videos here. There's eight DVDs uh, that I've produced over the years. It's all the hunting videos, of course. And there's, uh, there's uh, several there of Newfoundland. There's, there's three, I think, of the Yukon. So I got this paper, all written in on paper here because I didn't think I was going to get through it, but I'm making a mistake, that's for sure. And I would like to get these DVDs into the hands of as many hunters out there as possible. And what I'm going to do as an incentive to help people buy these videos, because I know DVD, DVDs are a thing of the past more or less, but you know, there's still some people with DVD players. And uh, this little bit of uh, news I'm going to add with a purchase of one of the DVDs. I'm sure it'll help you to buy one anyway, even if you don't have a DVD player. Uh, each DVD is 20 bucks. I've made an awesome agreement with Black Ridge Outfitters that every time someone purchases a DVD, uh, your name gets put in a draw for a free hunt here in Newfoundland with Black Ridge Outfitters, and I'll be, I'll be the guide. So, and if you don't want me to be the guide, we'll get one of the other guides uh, <laughs> to guide you. That's, that's all right, too. And you can pick whatever year it is you want to come up here to hunt. It's got to be after this year. It won't be this fall, but 24 on. I, I'll have all the information added to the description of this video, just in case you can understand my <laughs> new need, I guess you'd say. So all you got to do is send me an email at uh, nlmoosant at hotmail.com. And just let me know how many DVDs you want. Like I said, every time you buy one, if you buy 10, your name gets in the draw for 10 times. And uh, make sure that you add your full name and phone number and your complete mailing address to the, to the email. Uh, okay, once the 600 videos are sold, in the description, I'll head the description of this video and uh, explain that the, this uh, little uh, prize is over. And if it turns out to be a great success, I'm going to try my best to do it again. So, so before you send any money, make sure you check the description to make sure that the, the, that the prize is still up for grabs, you know. I, have only, I only got eight DVDs here, but I got a total of 11. So there's three that's not here. I'm, I don't have them in stock anymore. I got three of them online. Every time that someone purchases one online, same thing. I'll just add their name to the to the draw as well. Guys, it would be greatly appreciated if uh, everybody would share this as much as possible. The faster the DVD gets sold, the quicker we'll do the draw. So, share it. Uh, tell all your buddies about it, and uh, we'll see who, see who can win this uh, free on up here in Newfoundland. Good luck to everyone, and now get ready to watch what I think is one of my best videos I've ever put together of a moose hunt and it's up in the Yukon. It's uh, oh, it's amazing footage, a 40 point bull, as 40 point uh, as we would call it here in Newfoundland, we count all those bumps of course. But a 40 point bull and the, but the, the scenery and uh, uh, the footage that I've got added to this hunt is, uh, you're not going to see it anywhere else I don't think. It's great stuff, I think you're really going to enjoy it. So good luck to everyone and uh, Thank you very much. Was that one done, buddy? <laughs> oh, I'm dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I don't care for that. Oh, you beautiful friends. That cow. Did he go down? That's a big frickin' <laughs> <laughs>
word of God, he's 72 inches. <laughs> Hi, I'm Russ Seymour, and here's my son, Jared. We hail out of Park City in Billings, Montana. We're the Montana boys, and uh, I got this hunt as a gift from my lovely wife, Tanya, over a year ago. And after a year's preparation and excitement building up, we're finally here. And uh, I just turned 60 uh, last month, and it's been a year of waiting, and we can't wait to get after it. Dion Dix and Jason is our guides, and uh, from what I met yesterday, we got off the boat there uh, for the plane. They're great guys. I have a lot of confidence in them. Yeah, I've just been looking forward to this ever since Tanya told us. You know, I guess I knew long before he did. It was a surprise, and I've been really looking forward to it. And it's finally here. Seems like it's taken a long time, but now we're here, and I hope we find a monster. Well, something a father and son, every father and son, should get to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we are heading out at First Hunters from all the way from Montana, the Seymours. <laughs> Looking for the biggest one that's in the Yukon. So am I. <laughs> uh, got a trail camera down here. I want to go down and take a look. Two cameras actually. So we're going to take a ride down. Beautiful evening. See what we see for tomorrow. Big boys, gonna find them. Just uh, a couple days before the boys got in camp, I was down the lake checking the camera, and uh, I just looked down the shoreline. I seen this bull with a cow and a calf, and of course I just had to go in and get a closer look at him and do and film him, you know, like I always done. Well, I think if I had known what was going to happen, <laughs> I probably would have done things different. But anyway, I just went in and uh, watched him as he went in up to be right on the shoreline. So once he walked off the shoreline, and the wind was blowing loud, loud enough so that it was making noise, uh, on, in the, making noise in the water, and uh, the waves were rocking up against the shore. So I just walked down the beach in a hurry went in over the bank just up from where and a little bit downwind from where he went in and sure enough as soon as i seen him i began to uh pretend i was a bull to get him to come close to me so i could get some good pictures some good video <laughs> well uh that was uh, that was okay but i just got a little bit too i guess greedy you'd say uh when he come in close enough i just wanted to get a little bit closer, you know. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it 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 wouldn't it wouldn't fun uh, when I seen what was going to happen. But I'll just let it play out and uh, let you see how fast things could go wrong. And uh, it was a little bit of a learning process. Uh, I got set in my place, I guess, and I, I just got to admit that I did get a bad scare. Right now, I'm only like six or seven yards away from the from the bull, and this should have been good enough. But I don't know. I, <laughs> and, I, and I let him walk away, but uh, I decided to try and get him come back and uh, see if I, like I said, see if I get him come a little bit closer. Luckily, I did have this uh, small burned tree uh, that I can stand behind. That, uh, just in case he you know, got too close, but uh, even though I was using that tree to protect myself, I really wouldn't expect him to uh, would actually have to use that tree. When he turned and uh, walked out toward the lake again, I kind of went to the left to try to keep the tree exactly between me and the moose. And as I was moving, I don't know, something uh, really ticked him off. I think I hit a tree with my little straight pad there and uh, 
really upset him, so maybe that's what that's what led up to what was gonna happen right now. No. You go the other way. You go the other way. Go on. You go the other way. Get out! Get out! Oh. Closest I have ever been. Oh. I don't know if I got on film, but... Oh. Four feet, three feet. Oh, I hope I kept the camera straight, that's all. Wow. Ooh, one shaking crazy. Okay, so leave him alone. Well, day one, we just got to the shoreline, to the place where we want to go for a walk. I was out here a couple of days ago and uh, seen a beauty, but a long ways away, so. Look at the size of this bull I just found. Oh my, if I can only get him out here. as if it's day 10. We'll see how it goes. For everyone that's been to the Yukon, uh, you all know that it's so vast and as we were walking this ridge, we could have kept going on and on and on, but there comes a point that you just got to stop. You're gone far enough. So we went as far as we felt that we should and uh, I thought I was in the area where I seen this bull. Uh, but we just arrived no luck. Didn't see anything, didn't hear anything, so we had to put our tail between our legs and head back back down to the boat again uh, with no luck at all. Keep it. Okay, here we are. Uh, the day, we thought the morning was going to be done. It's like what? 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And... Uh, so I come across the lake and look back at our side like we always do. And we see a beauty. And it's only like 200 yards away from where we were this morning. Take a look at the spot and scope, Vortex spot and scope. And uh, need to get closer, but I think he's a shooter. Really wide boards, really wide. It looks like a lot of points on top. And, uh, Need to get closer to get a better judgment on him. Think, buddy. Let's go look at it. I saw his horns. I just saw the points, and uh, then it's gone. Now he turned his head or something. Yeah, yeah. He's laying in the grass. But yeah. Okay, let's go. What do you guys feel, Sam? What's going on? Well, we located a pretty good bull. We think across the lake. We went up, put a little bit of a stock on him. Didn't really like the approach. The wind was wrong, so. Kind of put him to bed for a little bit. Come back here and have some grub. I'm gonna head back out, see if we can't find him again. Let's do it. Yeah. Besides that, he probably grew a couple more inches between oh, now and yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go back and see if we can find him. Well, this bull uh, really got my number. Uh, this is like the third time now that I've tried to get within uh, a close distance of him to get at least get some video of him. I tried once before the boys got there, and uh, I just never got close enough. And then this morning, I tried, we tried, and it just didn't work out. And now here it is. We're going back. Everything was good, looking good. We were going down to where we were going to spy across the lake to see if the, if the bulls see on the area. And when we get there, I couldn't believe it. But there was a forest fire somewhere, and uh, the smoke was so heavy. We just couldn't see across the lake. Not sure what to think of this, but our plan to spot this bull and then make a stock out of him is uh, going out the window. For some reason, there's a forest fire somewhere. Look at all the smoke. And we can't see across the lake where the moose is. 
So we have no clue where it is or if it's still there. Can't see a thing. Okay, with us not knowing where this bull is, uh, we wouldn't <laughs> we wouldn't give up that easy. So we decided to go across the lake from where we've seen him earlier in the morning and uh, stay way downwind uh, of where he was last anyway and make a big circle up the ridge and, and try and get above the area so that we could take our time out work away down to here, down the hill so we can see much of course higher you get the better you can see what's below you so that, that's what our next plan was so uh, we're going to see if we can uh, at least get some advantage on him and uh, see how big he was we sure we didn't know yet how big the bull was so uh, we couldn't make no decision on even even if we was going to kill him uh for some reason this bull had me figured out i i really don't know why but i normally wouldn't have to go through all this effort to get this bull to come into us which is crazy and uh as you can see that little burn out from where he's at right now normally i could sneak up there and uh, act like a bull or cow whatever whatever i felt was right at the time and i mean the moose is only like maybe 300 400 yards in from the wide open burn but no way there was no way i can get that bull to come out in the open for me so that's why i had to go through all this effort to get above him and still wow we got him in front of us now, but we couldn't shoot because I couldn't see exactly how big it really was. I knew he was a beautiful bull, but of course we, we wanted to make sure that he was a really good one. And there was just no way. We could have shot him right in the shoulder here at one point. A uh, nice shot, maybe 250 yards away, but again, we couldn't, uh, couldn't tell for sure exactly how big he was. So, no. <laughs> Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, as I've said so many times before. Okay, good morning everybody. This is day two. We had a good day yesterday. Didn't didn't work out, but as long as we see one, that's what I feel. We see one that didn't work, but we're gonna give it a try at uh, our one of our favorite spots up Danny's Hill. So beautiful morning, and uh, never know we might see a big one. We'll see. Well, once again, Danny's Hill didn't disappoint uh, as soon as we got there. Uh, way off in the distance, a long ways away, we seen these two bulls together. And I tried to call with a cow call, and the bigger one was really interested, and he started to come in to us. And uh, we, we knew that if we can get him in uh, half decent close, we, we'd know that you know if he wasn't big enough well we knew for sure that the other one wouldn't at all so we began to uh, see that he started to come into us so as he got closer uh, we can see that you know he was a great bull but he wasn't a shooter not like what we were looking for so the boys uh, was okay with me just going in myself closer and I got up in a tree and begin to uh, call to him and get him come in close to me just so I can get some great footage. So just uh, sit back and enjoy this. It's just simply amazing how fast these moose can cover uh, ground. I mean, this moose was, oh, at least a mile and a half away from me. And I'm not sure exactly how long it took him, but it might have been. It might have been a little over a half hour, and he was within 100 yards of me. It was just unbelievable.
being up in the tree has uh, such an advantage, that, you know, especially in this situation. The bull had no clue where I was, and uh, when there's no wind, no, you get, you know, so nice of footage. He might not have been 65 inches wide, but he had some beautiful boards, and the points were just, just perfect. He'll make another hunter pretty happy in a year or so, that's for sure. He's only like maybe 25 yards from here now, and I know I've said it before. Uh, uh, you don't see how big they really are until they're like what, in 20, 25 or even less. And uh, then you realize that their bodies are so much bigger than our moose here in Newfoundland. It's just, a, it's just, it's just amazing to watch them coming in. There was very little wind, but being so close to me, eventually, finally, could sm could smell me from the tree. But I didn't know where I was. I've never seen a moose do this before, but like they say about deer. When they sense danger, they stomp their feet. Well, this bull does it here, and I'm guessing he's doing it for the same purpose, but it's the first time I've ever seen it. I think I had plenty of time to do some damage if I wanted to, but he, he took his time and hit it back to where he come from. Day three, we woke up to a real foggy morning, so we decided to uh, go for a walk. We knew we wouldn't gonna be able to do any spot and stock style hunt, so I knew for a spot that we we could go for a walk uh, down along by the side of a river. And I had this little trail that I I had cut over the years uh, in across the country, so we would have to do some calling to see if we can get a response. Fortunately, we can see that the fog is beginning to lift, so we knew it was only going to be a few minutes and we could see perfectly. It was deafening quiet, and uh, after I made my first call, we just stood there for, oh, I'd say half hour, and just listened. It was just it was beautiful. It was so still. And just waited, and all of a sudden, one of the boys, I think it was uh, Russ, that heard the bull grunt. And uh, we just listened, and I responded back right away, of course, and slowly, he started coming into us. And then we, all of a sudden, we could see him in the trees. Of course, we can see he wasn't a shooter, but just for the fun of it, I uh, decided to uh, see how close he would come to us, uh, just for the just for the video and the, and the experience. Of course, uh, we can see that he wasn't a big one, but he was trying his best to uh, intimidate us and uh, make us think that he was a monster.
after we got our footage that we wanted of this bull, we continue, continued on with the plan that we had in mind, and uh, we, we walked to the top of the high bank, just out past the river, and I decided to climb this big tree, and as I was up in the tree, I could hear what sounded like a cow, but a really low sound. So we had to move in closer to at least try and see if there's anything else in there. And I couldn't believe it, but uh, <laughs> this was a this was a patient scheme because we knew every now and then we did hear a bull, and, but it sounded like he was forever away. But now that we know what we know, he was there with the cow, but they were talking and communicating so low it sounded like they were miles away. I have a little walking trail here uh, winding through this burnt timber and as long as we were on that trail it was easy going but the moose is off to the left and when we left the trail to head in their direction the video don't do it justice but there's so much trees and dry stuff all over over the, the forest floor that uh, tree guys walking through the woods was so hard to keep quiet it was unbelievable so what I what I did was I would walk ahead maybe 40 50 yards and when I was doing my scraping and grunting whatever as soon as I start to scrape just to cover the boys noise I would get them to come racing toward me and then we would stop and I'd listen for a while and then I would hear the moose respond in there so then I would walk here to get myself and do the same thing when I begin to scrape I get them to come I'll come toward me again so that's how we gain ground on the moose without uh, uh, having to worry about the moose here and the, the noise we're making, you know? Jarrett was saying it's got to be a different bull, and yes, he was right. The, the bull that we seen down by the river, he made noise, but this thing, when he scraped his antlers on the trees, so... We knew that he had to have huge boards to, to make the sound he was making. I just wish that my description of the situation we were in, all you viewers could understand and, and get the feeling of it, but because there was so much cover, we couldn't see no more than 100 yards, and we knew that the moose was there somewhere, but they were just caught up in com communicate with one another, and not uh, really responding back to us like like you would normally see a moose do and uh, oh just trying to get in close enough to see him was just a battle and it was gonna gonna pay off like we we really thought this was a big one but it was a chance that we would never see him because it was just so much forest so much trees in the way and that we would scare him before we got even close to even be able to see him then jared with a little different angle than me and russ seen the tree shaking and finally we knew roughly where they were so <laughs> it was uh, it was getting pretty intense right now We could see the trees shaking there and uh, we could hear them grunting and for a second it sounded like he was coming straight toward us and then all of a sudden it was dead quiet like he's, going, like he's leaving. All oh, was so hard on the patience and the nerves but we just wanted to start walking straight through the woods but 
Uh, usually, uh, what I've learned is it's, it's better be patient and just just wait it out. So that's what I was going to stick to. Jarrett behind was filming all this and uh, thankfully he knew what he was doing and every time I was straight that's when he would make a step forward to, to use it to cover it as the noise he was making so that, that was great <laughs> to have somebody behind me knowing what they're doing is, is a bonus that's for sure. Finally, I got a look at this rack, and man, it was a beauty. So I just turned and told uh, Ross, get ready, he's a shooter. 